So, Yenel, sorry, we missed your uh, presentation. It was on the art topic also. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, but um, no, it's all good. It's, uh, yeah, I think licensing is more fun. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of boring. We, we licensing was all of yeah, law, law, lawyers talk. It was yeah. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> I thought I agree with you on the copy left stuff because um it's quite interesting looking at some like Stack Overflow discussions around sorry not Stack Overflow um like GitHub issue things around people trying to change their licenses after the fact and they get oh, all that right. kind of like viral problems from the GP um the new public license coming yeah. across yeah yeah, yeah like, a lot a lot of people I think it was like the what's banner steve banners i think he was like um one of the president of microsoft or some or ceo mm. at least once oh yeah, yeah. He, he was the one like uh who said like uh the gdl license was viral because like it it contaminated the other like obviously you have some <laughs> interest into the license <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, yeah yeah uh, i'm glad we skipped that chapter <laughs> I learned that I, I I learned this guy was also behind the US Act. US what? US, US yeah US fact or something like that like a fact a good kind of like fact checking website or that provide you oh, like yeah, yeah. basic uh, uh, basic yeah. I mean basic statistics so at least he's not spending that money uh, on <laughs> On everything, <laughs> but I yeah. think the I think the only thing I got out of chapter thirteen is that the MIT license came from MIT. <laughs> that was just mind blowing. Like I never I never really thought about why it's called MIT until like, yeah, like say. No, <laughs> it, it, I think like if we should say like a like, few words about it, it's like basically like uh, you have two paths to follow. I will say like the permit. Permissive one like MIT, Apache, yeah, like that, and more strict copy one, co copyleft one. And yeah. then I kind of like it will depend of your philosophy or ethical point of view, which I do not think like I mean, it's, I think it's individual choice, no. And then uh, it depends of your boss, <laughs> 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 which yeah. is maybe outside of your jurisdiction. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah it was i mean yeah not very i i like i said like i think uh i don't know this is maybe because i came from a social science background that i feel like sometimes you need to ground yourself in like the history of why they are being built but yeah. i i also understand also the point of the book like not going too far into that and give you like straight what you need to do. And mm -hmm. if you want the story, other book probably provided better. But this is something like I regret a bit in this book. This is a lack of a good um, bibliography. You know, some, mm. sometimes you, uh, yeah. like for, for the test, uh, I found myself a bit frustrated because that's something that I like, I'm bad at doing it. And I don't know. I, I feel like I need a bit more and I will be happily like check like what the references they will provide. And mm -hmm. currently they are not. So uh, mm -hmm. and know that I think they do not provide a lot of references. So maybe it's a design point, like a, a choice uh, that I can understand. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's lacking a bit, I feel. And for example, on the next chapters, um, they the quote an author, so I Google it. <laughs> it was all cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> and what his writing is look quite interesting. So not not you know why not like link put a link of the book also. So chapter fourteen is testing basics, and in this chapter we're gonna learn how to do formal automated testing, also known as unit testing, using the test that package. And so uh, this gift is just like an illustration of what testing might look like. Honestly, I honestly just put it in there because I didn't have anything else to put. Um, but move on. 
So the motivation for testing is your previous workflow probably looked like this. So you will write a function, you load the function using dev tools, load all function, and then you would experiment with it in your console. So what this is called is informal ad hoc testing. And so this chapter will teach you how to transition to unit testing. And unit testing requires more upfront work, but it will pay off in the long run because it will lead to fewer bugs, better code structure, and robust code. So more pain in the short term, but more payoff in the long run. So the initial setup is you will you will want to use test that package. And to do that, you want to run use this underscore uh, use underscore test that three. And so what this does is it create the test and test that directory. And it adds test that package to the suggest field in the description. And also specify uh, this addition three in this field. And also it creates the test that that R script in the test directory. And this script basically runs all your tests when the R CMD check runs. So Testot recently came up, well, a couple of years ago, came up with the uh, new edition, uh, edition three. And so that's why you want to put three in here to be able to use this new edition. Okay, so to create a test, uh, so let's let's look at let's look at creating a test. Um, so the let's say you have a foofy function, and you define the foofy function in the R directory inside this foofy R script. Then the test for this function should live in test dash foofy R. And so basically the hierarchical structure of the, the function and the test looks like this. So in the R directory, you have foofy.r, which contains the foofy function. And in the test-test.dat directory, you have the test-test-foofy.r, which contains these test.dat functions. And so, this use this package offers a helpful pair of functions that help you create these um, these R scripts in the appropriate locations. So use this use R function lets you create this R script inside the R directory, and use test uh, lets you create and also and also these. Both these functions also open the things that they create. The use test will create this test file inside the test that folder or inside the test folder. Um, and, it will, and it will open the, the test folder or the test script. So the book also goes into different phases of testing that you might go through. So the first phase they call the micro iteration phase. And so this is the interactive phase where you will initiate and refine a function and its tests in tandem. So say you made a foofy function and you would load it using DevTools load all. And then you can interactively explore and refine the expectations and tests using the expect equal function, which we'll talk about later on in this expectation section. And you you would include this expect function inside the test that function here. Um, and we'll talk about this function later on too. 
So after you're done with creating these uh, test dot functions for the foofy function, you have a large file of all the tests for the foofy function. And you would execute this file using the test that test file function. And so in this example, you use test file and then you just specify the location of your, your test foofy script. And so after you, you have done this for all the functions, so you have a multiple test dash blah 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 R scripts. Um, you can run your entire test suite with the DevTools test function. And also when you do an R CMD check, it apparently runs this function as well. So here I just show an output of DevTools test. Um, so this just shows you like how long this test ran. Basically, I just like look at the, the, the last line of this output and you basically want to have zeros and zeros here and you want all, all your tests to pass before you move on. Any questions? I actually had a question on the other section. Yeah, on those the section. go ahead. Yeah. Functions. So, is it? It's actually about the R file name, right, and not the function inside, or because you'll have more than one function in a dot R file. Yeah, do you think? Go ahead. It depends, no? Here, yeah, like they take a simple, I think, simple uh, example where you have a function per uh, file. But uh, I think, like, it's if you have like more than one, or does it work? This is your question. Or yeah, a... so for, I guess in the arguments below, like, for those functions you use underscore r and use underscore test are those characters always r dot r file names or are they always function name i think they are the file name okay so that's happened here to be the function okay that's why like in the books i recommend also like uh, to keep all your tests with the test name of the file, file that, yeah, okay. uh, and the uh, function uh, just the function name of the file okay. i think this was like uh, recommended in the book i agree it's not that clear here yeah because they recommend not having right one function in one file <laughs> well you can do it i assume yeah <laughs> I, I i do not think it's i think yeah the, the, this use that our foofy uh, is um, yeah. is calling the file. I think. Okay. I mean, it's it's gonna detect like you know, it's gonna like detect in the test. I uh, know, yeah. Like if you use use test, it's gonna detect in test that the that what they say. If I remember correctly in the book, like you can use test uh, dash uh, dash uh, foofy uh, dot r. Or you can just use test uh, with foofy, like mm -hmm. it, you know, like the common. Like uh, I think they said it. Like it will uh, this function. Oh uh, here, here. Yeah, um, that's it. Test dash plug r. They are smart. Let's say like they they consider the user like uh, not like uh, someone who who can make mistake. Let's say and will. And they will like understand like if you, but it's basically calling the file. This is why like you have it like dot r. Okay. And 
Yeah, target, uh, I think target files. Okay, yeah. I think it stands for the file name because okay, yeah, it says either one can be called with a file name. Okay. I guess I should have read more carefully. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and also running this function opens this file. Mm -hmm. I'm it's, guessing it's the file name. Yeah, it says in the line above that little, uh, uh, above the code yeah. block, it says either one can be called with a file name. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And just to follow like to the section where we were, like the next one, uh, I realized yeah. like FWS, it just fail, wait and skip. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, it's just the... Oh. Uh, in, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Born, yeah. Uh, so. It's okay. Is that the same thing as path? I think so, yes. Because like, you know, like at least on the example, like, okay, seems to be one. So I assume like it passed, you know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. We'll I mean, probably never... have to exper experiment it. <laughs> yeah. If, if some fail, like you probably need to check which one. So I hope like, you know, it, it's provide like, like the context is good enough. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Half a minute, by the way. Yeah, for for seven hundred tests. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, test organization is the next section, and um, the book shows you what the test dash that R file looks like from the string R package. So this file basically tests the string dupe function. I think it's checking if there's a duplicate in the string. So this is like an example of what a test file looks like. I think it duplicates. And Let me check. Oh, yeah. it duplicates. I, yeah, it duplicates. Input. So when you you do string duplicates R three times, it just do R, R, R. Oh, A, A, A. Sorry <laughs> okay. for my French. Uh, but I never use it, so <laughs> I assume that. I'm going to check it. So you check, like, it, it compare, like, if the result of the function and this result is the same, or at least equal. Oh, I see. Define, I don't know, but. That makes yeah. sense. This is how I understand it. I will check. So the time like you. Yeah, I've never used this function before. Me neither. Yeah, I like how they have emojis. But um, so basically, in each file, there's a hierarchy of functions. The expectations are like the lowest level in the hierarchy. And they're grouped into tests, which is which are organized into files. The file holds multiple tests for a single function. And then a test groups together multiple expectations. So this test groups together these two expectations. And so to create a test, you would input the description of your test and then the expectation code below here. And then expectation describes the expected result of your computation. Um, I think we go into that later on. But basically the first argument would be, I think it's the actual result and then what you expect is the what comes next. But yeah, let's move on to that next here. Yeah. So expectation is a binary assertion, so true and false, about whether or not an object has the properties you expect. 
and the structure is expect underscore and then equal or identical or um, any other related function. And then you have actual, so your actual result, and then your expected result comes next. And if the actual result and the expected result do not agree, that's when test that will throw an error. So the first family of functions of expect functions is expect equal, which checks for equality and also gives you some reasonable amount of numeric tolerance. And so for example, expect equals 10, 10 is obviously equal, but then also expect equals 10, 10 plus this very small number also returns true because it tolerates this really small number. And just, yeah, it, it reads this as the same thing. But then if you do expect equal 10-11, then it will return an error. But if you want to test for exact equivalence, then there's another function called expect identical. So going back to this function here, this will return true, but expect identical. It will expect these two to be identical or exactly equivalent. But since there is a small difference between these two numbers, it will return error. Does that make sense? Yep. Let's confirm it. Yeah, I think another example they give in the book is like expect equal 10 10 L. So 10 is a double and 10 L is an integer. And that would return true. But expect identical 10 10 L returns false because they're different, like types. Type. Type, yeah. So that's expect equal. And expect error, it tests for errors. So it basically checks whether an expression throws an error. And a related uh, family of functions is expect warning and expect message, which also check whether expression throws a warning or a message. For example, one divided by A will throw an error in the console because, yeah, because of this. And if you put this in the expect error function, it won't, it will return true because, because this expression throws an error. But then if you have log minus one, it will show you a warning in the R console. And if you put this in the expect warning function, then it will also return true because this expression returns a warning. Yeah, they, they go a bit further in the book. Uh, apparently like the in the book, they go a bit further into that uh, on uh, testing errors. Uh, with like, you can also like test in error and submit better stuff. This is all I understand very quickly. Like uh, they use like expect error, use a regex, like the non-numeric argument, because what they said, like if you have an error, it's written true, but it's maybe not the error you are searching for. This is how I have understood it. Like, let's say like you have like generating an error for whatever reason, then you will get true. So you will not test if you have the correct error message. So this is why like they added like this, uh, uh, like you have like expect error, like so you have the one divided by uh, uh -huh. characters. And then you want to test like as a, it, it's uh, contained a non-numeric argument. And if you use it in other stuff, uh, 
uh, let's say like something uh, different, you put another that does not appear in the one divided by um, A, it, it should uh, test it carefully. See, it's, it, it contains non-numeric argument. So they just copy past it to uh, oh, the second argument of expect error, which take, I understand a string of car like that. You test for it. Yeah. And they, they have a new version apparently, like um, that's why they say historically, but I didn't even understand fully what was the new version of it. Oh yes, it was with Waldo or something like that, I think. Or maybe it was for snapshot. I don't I don't remember. I have to read it again. Yeah, Waldo Waldo oh, okay. pops up in the snapshot test. But like at my level, this this was like, you know, I was just like guessing because uh oh yeah it was like the class yes that's it yeah. so apparently like the new air version introduced some class for error and you can test for it this is how i understand it so i guess if you do not provide an argument i mean if you just provide a string of characters it will use a regex inside the error message and if you provide the class, it will check of the class of error are return. Yeah. But yeah, this start to be like out of my league. I don't know if others like. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, if no one have anything to say, we can go back to Snapchat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's also above my head too. Yeah, um, but it's good to know, like, uh, uh, I, just like the idea if you are testing on error, currently, like, if you just use the basic one, uh, it just tests an error. And an error can be, you know, like, it can be plenty of error. <laughs> be... Right, I see. And maybe you are not testing for what you want to test. I don't know. This was like, yeah, what I remember. Okay, so you have, like, you can provide more arguments yeah so when i'm gonna be able to do that i will reread the chapters <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so thought snapshot testing was like the most confusing part of this chapter i agree yeah. So the basic idea of snapshot testing is you record your expected result in a separate human readable file or in a .md file. And so test that alerts you when a newly computed result differs from what you previously captured in your snapshot. So here we use the Waldo package to illustrate snapshot testing. And so the book has this code. Um, I think it's just like used for comparing these two vectors. So what I got out of this is like, these two inputs differ mainly at the start and at the end. So like the first input has capital X, A, B, C. I mean, it has and like two letters. Letters is just a, a pseudo function that generates letters. So if you type letters in our console. Yeah, it's like uh, A, B, C, D. It, yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's just basically like generate two vectors and it's the concatenated and they concatenated yeah. with the, like the x appear in the hand on the second part and the x appear in the first part uh, at the beginning of the first part but yeah i agree like it's a bit like you know <laughs> you need to know letters <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think like and... you could simplify that but, but yeah uh-huh so, yeah, so basically they 
they use this function to uh they put this function inside a snapshot test. Um so they have the test that that they have a description of this test. And then they put this function along with the expect snapshot function. Um and so basically when you run this you will execute the test the first time. Or uh, when you execute the first this the test the first time, you will see this warning message saying that R is adding a new snapshot to this test dot folder underscore snaps underscore def dot md and um, this snapshot file will look exactly like what you see in the console. And so it's, it's very readable. Um, but when a snapshot test fails, then what happens? So say you change or say there's an internal change where the default labels switch from old to new. I mean, yeah, from old and new to old and new, capitalized. Then the output would look like this. Um, so it's just like, I think, I think this is like printing out the, the raw, the raw source code of the snapshot. Yeah, just the, the minus and the plus show you the differences, but I kind of forget. Uh, it looks a bit like version controller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like I have a hard time wrapping my mind also on that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think. I think that if you run this snapshot review function, it will show this in a Shania. Oh yeah. And so hopefully it shows a prettier output in the Shania. I haven't tried it, it's but yeah, maybe. Yeah, I haven't tried it either. And you can also accept all your changes. So if you intended to change the labels, so if you intended to capitalize your labels, then you can just in the sub using chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can use the snapshot accept function to just accept your changes. Yeah, but this part was super confusing. Yeah. Um yeah I, I, yeah, I agree. I understand I now. I think a bit more with your explanation. Yeah, I think they just use Waldo to set it up. But I think what they're saying is if you have this complicated output from your function, you don't want to code up potentially how it, how a change could be <laughs> like you don't want to manually code up something to compare two outputs yeah yes they and, just will so do. and then the, the snapshot does it for you i think it'll just tell you if it, what changed this is what yeah it does it change but i think like the what is confusing is like the old new is just a change into your testing suite. I think. Like I think the, the, the capital. Maybe. You have to, this is what they explain at the hand part, I think. Because like when you get snapshot, it's better. Okay, so I think the snapshot 
is saving uh, a text. Yeah. If you are changing the function, if you are changing something, like all and you in your test. No, let me actually just run this function. Sure. So we can. I think it's not you're changing something in your test. I think it's change if you're changing something in your function, and then the snap when you run so. the test. Uh, that's that's why I understand it first, but I think no, I understand it differently. We can check that. Uh, I guess that makes well. Okay, I see what you're saying because okay, the Waldo so is in the test. Okay. Um, I know. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I see what you're saying because the compare is comparing is doing it in the test. Yeah, not in your function. It's lower, like it would let you. You can tell me. Oh, I need to see. No, you you need to go down a bit. Like this was, uh, this was like the part with the air command check. I think what you copied. If we go down a bit lower, yeah, it's super difficult to be past it. Like <laughs> putting it if it. Let me check. I think it's low. It's lower part in the book. Mm, what we are this? The all new capitalized. Come on. Why oh, open it three times? Need oh. to ex expect snapshots. I think. Yeah, I need think to I need put to... this test that into uh, yeah, put in a and accept whatever's. Oh, it... It's okay. Slowly loading here. Go to this thing. Snapshot. See what about uh, what what I said like what about a snapshot test fail? Let's imagine an hypothetical internal change where the default label switch from old and new to old and new capitalize. Here, this is the okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, it's not clear. Like you can be right also. Like. <laughs> Yeah, we should think of like a, a question about about yeah. this. This is this is a bit unclear. I agree. I mean it's also because we cannot reproduce it, no? <laughs> yeah, we can... well not quickly. We have to we have to make these files. Yeah. No, but I was like you, I was like confused by this part. So at least yes. we had two two of us were confused, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm confused too. So three, three, no, three. Should we ask Jenny about this chapter? Yeah, we should think of a question about that. Yeah. yeah. We, can, we can put a note in there for now. Yeah. Um, and test it and later like ask a better question. Yeah, I'll put a note. I will, I will do the test and try later as on. No, everyone is tired. Um, I don't think we have a speaker for next week. 
Oh, I'm gonna check. This is good. I mean, anyway, we are nearly done, like with the chapter. Like we just have like a match after, and you have like other like uh, more uh, the. I mean, at this point, like I don't know. Uh, I feel like you can just go and the chapter like feel me feel like I don't know. I should just read like the that documentation. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I could probably go next week. Oh, it's actually a very. Oh no, I thought it was a really short chapter. Then I clicked on this fifteen point two, and it's not a short chapter. It looks like I'm. No, but you have a lot of text, like you know, a lot of the text are like just uh, printing the code. Yeah. Yeah, I can try to. But it, it was still, uh, when you still have to do a good justice uh, of presenting it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I should be able to do it. Let, let me check who's the next. Well, no one's here. <laughs> Child slide. Uh, no, uh, this is the, um, not child slide. So do we have, yeah. do we have no one next week or not? We don't have anyone for three weeks. Oh my god! Uh, I'd I, I can yeah. I can do once. Uh, I can. So I, I, I haven't understand it, so <laughs> you will suffer my non-understanding. Oh, Torin, you are putting yourself good. Yeah, I'll go next week and. Uh, let me check in my agenda. Do it before the semester uh, starts. Oh, has it not started yet? No, we don't start until after Martin Luther King, uh, until the 17th. Oh, I see. Because you thought started yesterday. Yeah. You're on quarters, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are yeah. you guys on semester? Semesters. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, I, I can try to put myself on the next, the one afters. Okay. 60. But uh, I will be alone with two kids, so I hope they will go to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> they can join us too. Well, you know, uh, at one year and five years, like. Oh, two years. <laughs> <laughs> they should be at bed at this time. Yeah. Definitely. But, okay. So, well. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Like I, I will I will test a bit by myself. Um, yeah, me too. But uh, I still have like difficulty uh, wrapping my mind. I think I have to check what others have done. Yeah. And ask a bit more. Like like I said, like I have tried a bit internet, like to find random help on it. But like I found mostly like you know five tips to help you improve your test and that's <laughs> bullshit <laughs> and, and the yeah. seven will like surprise you what <laughs> and but, that's so yeah, I, okay. yeah i feel Marketing. like uh, i i found what one, one good one like i haven't about, like that di that they do the differentiation between like imperative uh function and like real function function or functions they call pure function an impure function, and that helped me a bit. So I do not know if you know the distinction. I didn't know it before reading this. Like basically, no. like any function that's modified outside the effect, it's called impure or whatever, or imperative. That's basically like when you are making, like let's say, a call into a database and getting data from it, or printing a plot. And this produced like code outside of whatever's the realm of what you are doing. And uh, a pure function should be like always produce the same results. Like you are basically like throwing whatever's, um, let's say, uh, like the additive function two plus two should always, always you give four, whatever it's called. But if you are like, let's say, like the number of four into a database, the result will depend on the number of four into the database. Yeah. So they said it's way easier to test what they call pure function than uh, testing uh, functions that modify uh, environment and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So this helped me, helped me a bit, but I still like uh, a beginner of understanding, like, like, you know, 
been a bit of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, I might try to watch some of the other cohorts and see. Because this oh, has good. been in the other editions too, right? Yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Uh, we can ask also like in the chat though. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't think the other, like the previous cohort had this chapter. But... Did they? Uh, not? I have to check, yeah. the, check the, the book um, club book thing. Preface. Chapter three. Do you know much about um, test driven development? They mention it like once in the book, but I remember learning that in uni. Like, it was a course for learning to code, and then they started teaching us test driven development before we knew how to code, and it got quite confusing because it's kind of like, write the test before you write the code. I'm like, but I don't even know how to yeah. write the code mm. in the first place. So hmm. it, it was, it's, it, yeah, it's had to, it, I found it kind of difficult to get my head around, but it was I kind of like you write the test first with the intention that it will fail. Then you write a piece of code, the bare minimum to make it pass. And then you can develop, once that passes, you develop it further and do like a was it recursively or reiterated or something? Oh yeah, uh, um, yeah. Which and, once you get your head around it, you're like, oh yeah, I can kind of see how that works. But put a good message. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's good. Like, uh, thank you for mentioning that because, like, uh, I'm trying to learn Python. I suck at it, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I do like exercise, you know. And um, the exercise is where, like, you you need, you know, like, you have, like, to pass some kind of stupid whatevers. And mm. uh, uh, and they provide input, you should provide output. And this is a lot, I think, this idea of this, right? You, you need to write your test because, like, you do not know how to write the function or the code that pass the test. So you need to write, like, what's the test input and what the test output should be. And mm. then you code against it and then if it's the output is not the same and what you expect with this kind of output it's throw you an error so it's kind of makes sense what you say like uh it's basic but I, it's hard to figure that when you are doing analysis or building stuff like uh um, yeah but yeah if you need just you know like you have clear input clear output this makes sense so let's say like you, I, i'm gonna test like you know against zero like because uh, I will I will throw some zero somewhere or non-valuable and see how my code handle that and then I will add more stuff like oh how can I handle zero and then I will do a throw an exception if zero should return that and stuff like that yeah. so yeah uh, I should check that thanks yeah it kind of because it gets into the like philosophy of it as well which I think helps a bit. I will add that like in the chat so uh, we have it uh, printed when you click mm -hmm. test driven development. <laughs> test driven development. Test yeah. driven development. Development. Anyway, English is still out. Development. No, probably not. But anyway, that's fine. I will find it now. Oh, cool. So <laughs> You're close. <laughs> All right. Of yeah. Thanks so much, Howard. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Howard. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks, anyway. Thanks, everyone. And see you next week. See you yeah. all next week. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.